Now you're also watching Ways National Dollar Day takes place each year on August 8th as it is um, the anniversary uh, of the date when the Continental Congress established um, that the money unit of the United States would be the dollar. Now this happened in 1786 and just six years later the United States Mint was established in 1792. The U.S. currency has been the dollar for more than 200 years. And this particular currency is the one that is giving us a lot of headaches mm. <laughs> in Nigeria because we have an economy that is solely dependent on this particular currency. Everything, if you want to buy a four, it will tell you dollar has gone up. <laughs> it's a very strong global currency. Um, uh, when I heard that uh, at some point, yeah, the Chinese, they were, they were in talks with President Buhari on them, Nigerians just directly buying um, things from China using their currency. I said, yes, finally. But uh, it did not happen. Yeah, because like literally, right, for every transaction you want to do in this country, you have to go through Convert, the dollar. Yeah, so, I mean, the only places that I've been to that I've not had to buy the dollar is probably when I'm going to Europe or when I'm going to the UK. But every other transaction, you have to get um, dollars first. Then when you then get to where you're going to, you then have to convert it. So it's a very important currency to our economy. And I hope that, you know, if we truly want to change that status quo, like this diversification of the economy that they're talking, let it not be just theory or just talk. Truly divest our economy. Let's have us, you know, as Nigerians, um, pushing out more of our stuff to the world. And, you know, that way, the burden of the, the dollar, you know, or the pressure and all of that would drop and, you know, we would actually even strengthen our Naira because it makes no sense. We almost get hitting a thousand Naira to a dollar. So this day is very important to us. <laughs> very, very important. Especially her. That's true. See the way she's looking at me with corner eye. Because it's really affecting my, It's really <laughs> affecting work and, um, you know, the... There's really no longer middle class, or uh, like someone was saying, there's before you get to the very top upper class, there's the still upper middle class, mm. you know, and that's being shrunk or, you know. All of them, they are in Canada now. Yes, they're relocating. Mm -hmm. People are stiff with the money, even the 1%. You know, because what I sell is not in necessity. So it makes it's it... luxury. Yeah, it makes it harder for, you know, people... They would rather even buy it when they're abroad because they're getting an experience which is they're on vacation, so they're away from Nigeria's problems, and you can easily just spend your money and forget about it. And when you come back, you think about your problems in Nigeria. So in Nigeria, and you're here bringing luxury to them. It's like, no, we're, we're farming here. We're, we're everybody now. Every big man you meet now, ah, I'm mm. a farmer. <laughs> what do you do, sir? I'm a farmer. Okay, okay. <laughs> that farming is a new, is a new way now. So it's, <laughs> it's really, you know, um, it's, crazy. Mm. it's crazy. Do we have EC now? Hi, EC, a father, EC, Vahome. Hello, Sayuame. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Mary. Hello. Hello. Is the dollar affecting you? Hello, Sayuame. Hello, Diola. Hi. I said, is the dollar affecting you too? Ah. Does she not look like the dollar has to <laughs> You want to the story of lamentations here? I really do. <laughs> it is totally affecting me. I, In fact, Nigeria is, let me just put it the normal way we usually say it, it is well mm. with us. It, it is, is well, well oh, my sister. All right, Mama, what did you find for us today in the news? Okay, in the news today, what caught my attention is the story about Waek, and it simply says it simply says that um, Waek withholds results of over two hundred thousand candidates records uh, records seventy nine point eighty one percent pass. And the little um, pick there is on the fact that the white boss, um, Patrick Arega, said that candidates no longer, 
no longer are no longer ready to study, noting that they lack self-confidence and preparations for examinations are quite poor. Now, this actually caught my attention because he is not far from the truth. What he said is quite apt because currently we had, if you recall, we discussed the story about um, individuals in the past that did not perform well and they had a lot of um, students or exam, uh, exam writers carrying the crib sheet. The crib sheet, that's what we popularly call expo or chukuli into the examination hall. So that is a, as a result of the fact that individuals were caught with the crib sheet. So they didn't um, re release results in these um, areas that were that they had a lot of examination malpractice. And I, like I stated earlier, it is about time that parents step up to the plate, try to curb this culture of examination malpractice because it begins from home and transcends to the school and to the um, society at large. So it is high time we actually curb this menace that we have in, um, in Nigeria. But he also recorded the fact that, or he stated that we had a lot of passes as well. So kudos to those who actually did the work. Yeah, I was just going to say that we also received my son's work results today. It was quite good. We thank God. Um, and something revolutionary that I think WAEC is doing is the ability for them to download their certificates almost immediately, you know. Oh. So immediately. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's something that they've not done before. Ever. So this is a good, mm. you know, it's a good yeah. fit. So instead of all that time, you have to wait for yeah. your certificate. So now it's almost like you can quick, you can get your your e-certificates like, you know, That's fantastic. like this. So yeah. That's well, there's been a lot of improvements in, um, in our, um, especially with WAEC, you know. I, I was going to say, let me shade the jam small, you know, but make her keep quiet because the same person we write jam, you know, where they give them 60 something for English, the same person I work na na A1 you get. So I just, they, they use corner eye, they look jam. Hmm. I will still call jam out, but it's not now because. But you matter, just shade and jam. <laughs> when I'm like, no concern me. No, but I'm just saying, see, literally, I, I think maybe they should start giving us our, our result sheet or something, like upload it. It's not that difficult. Technology has made life easy. Mm -hmm. Let me even see my score. Let me see that this was my script. Because these days, eh, sometimes I just look at some kind of result. I just, hmm. You just see one outlier there. Like, literally, can you not even check yourself? You know, that this mm -hmm. result. But it's not a, it's a story for another day. <laughs> then, maybe, maybe because my children are writing a, a work yeah, now. That's why I'm, yeah. that's why I bought her. Hey. hey, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Let's move on, please. Uh, let me come to you, Mary, then I'll take a story. Uh, okay, okay um, so today, this evening, we heard the news that the senior pastor of Fountain Life Church, Pastor Taiwo Udukoya, passed on today on Monday, 7th of... No, yesterday, Monday, August 7th, 2023, in the United States of America. In a statement, the church said, the Fountain of Life Church family in total submission to the will of God Almighty announces the passing on to greater glory of our Father, Teacher, a great servant of the Most High God, Pastor Daniel Taiwo Udukoya, founding pastor of the Fountain of Life Church. Mm, so sad. Pretty sad. You know, I was, um, I was telling you guys I had a mental fatigue. Like, I, I was working working and you know on my laptop like literally tears couldn't stop rolling down my cheek my eyes was just bringing out tears all itchy and all of that i just said you know what let me shut down so i actually just oh on its own on its own so i just shut down my laptop and just said you know what let me take a nap because i was feeling a bit of headache and only for me to open my eyes and you know try to go through because I, I had a few missed calls i needed to return and um going on instagram i was trying to find a what's in the news mm -hmm. when i now found that um, post. It was really, really... But you see, if you look at um, Pastor Taiwo Dukoya, he's, he's really suffered a lot of losses. In fact, when the last one happened, which was his wife, Pastor Nomti, when she passed, like, I was saying that, God, please just comfort this man, you know, just comfort this man, because I really don't even know how this man will be able to cope, you understand? It's, it's really sad. 
Um, I'll just say that my heart goes out to his family, and um, I pray. I pray for comfort for them. I pray for comfort for them because they've suffered <coughs> a lot of losses. His twin yes. had passed. Yeah. His, you know, he's had a loss again. With I mean, it's, well, thank God that they are Christians, and you know, this is the time that they truly need the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and I know that He will definitely, you know, comfort them. So our heart goes out to the entire Fountain of, Lord, um, Fountain of Life church members and, you know, the, the immediate family of Pastor Taiwo Dukoya. All right, Diola, what did you find for us in the news? Okay, so um, this one struck me because um, I remember that a couple of days ago, you know, on the show, we had discussed um, fake news and all yeah. that. So this is um, Akwabio Gowan showing car others to attend a three-day summit on fake news misinformation. Um, the president of the Senate, Senator Godswill Akwabio, former military head of state, General Yakubu Gowan, Professor Wale Shenka, and all the dignitaries are expected to attend a three-day summit aimed at addressing the issues of fake news, misinformation, and disinformation. Um, the summit is organized by bloggers, vloggers, and content creators from all 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. Um, I think this is fantastic. I mean, this is the first ever National Bloggers and Vloggers Summit. And, um, you know, there's been some concern about how many bloggers have failed to distinguish between accurate information misinformation and disinformation. Um, the bloggers have been attributed to being agents of fake news. This assertion may not entirely be correct, but the effects of fake news, hate speech, and campaigns of cal calumny that characterized the last election, I mean, this was really visible in the last election, you know, in terms of the fact that there was a lot of... Um, miscommunication. Yeah, miscommunication, misrepresentation, hate speech, mm. and everything was just flying up and down. It, it almost felt like there was no... There was no line, you know. Every, everything was up for grabs, you mm. know. So I think this is fantastic. And, um, you know, so the, the whole goal here... Well, is, see, uh, uh, Auntie, what yeah. if it is this fantastic? What if it three days summit? What if... No, I mean, so, this, the, for it to get national... So um, I get it. The yeah. goal, I don't have a problem with yeah. it. But how can this three day summit mm -hmm. truly be effective? Because summits are just, they come, they talk, and then what? Well, Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So, I see, honestly speaking, and that's why for me, right, attending all these conferences and all mm -hmm. of that... Is a bit just talking about the problem. Do you understand? Yes, you yeah. would you would have all these speakers come, they talk about all the implications of fake news and all of that. How would it truly translate into us becoming a lot more responsible? Mm. Because right now, the bloggers are not just your people that are officially making money from blogging. Yeah. Anybody with a mobile phone and data yeah. can become a like literally yeah. you can you can spread fake news. Absolutely. So fake news is beyond just um, putting together a conference, a three-day summit, is a fantastic idea that they understand that there's a problem and they're trying to solve it. But, you know, Nigeria and summit, I think I have a very, very bad... Um, the appearance of something. Yeah. So, summits are just like opportunities for a lot of money to be spent, mm. right? So you put in together all the grand things and all of that. But it really does not affect the change that we're, we're seeking. So for me, that's why, you know, when I see all these three-day summit, one-day summit, whatever, because I can literally tell you that a billionaire went into the summit. I can literally tell you that. But imagine if I'm taking that money and probably look for a more creative and innovative way to tackle fake news, right? I don't know. I'm not the one that will give them the solutions, but I just believe that things like summits and all of those things are just talk shops, right? Mm. It's just like wh what we do here. We talk. But beyond the talk, we have also personal engagements yeah. that, you know, we're able to then affect uh, real life changes, you know. So I think that's what it should be. Not really so much of, because if it is for summit, a lot of people have talked about impact of yeah. fake news. And, yeah. So what would be the kind of topic lineup and all of that? It will still be talk. How do we move it away from talk to real life, you know, practical solutions? That's the only question I'll leave it, you know, I'll leave to them to answer. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll take a break now. When we come back from that break, let us stop the one that Van Vika said. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us.